Hi everyone, it's Lauren and welcome to part one of my reading wrap up for the month of May. I'm very pleased to say that I have been working with the Baileys Women's Prize for Fiction again this year, which means that I have been reading and I'm going to review all of the shortlisted books and then also me and Jen and Jean are going to be doing a video all together in the next couple of weeks where we discuss all of our different reactions to the shortlisted books, which our favourites are and which one we think is going to win. So I've already read three of the shortlisted books, which are First Love, Do Not Say We Have Nothing, and stay with me. So if you'd like to see my reviews for those, I will leave links to those videos in the description box below. And in this video, we're going to get on to the next three on the shortlist, and I'm also going to be discussing my favorites and who I think is gonna win, or who I'd like to win anyway. So the first book that I finished this month was The Dark Circle by Linda Grant. This is about two twins in post-war East End of London, Lenny and Miriam, who contract TB. And with the opening of the new NHS, uh, National Health Service, they are now able to go to a sanatorium um, down in Kent, I think, to rest their lungs and um, hopefully get better, although it was a disease that people didn't really know very much about at the time. So this is about their journey, about them taking a break from their lives, essentially, and going down to somewhere completely different and all of the different characters that they meet and the different people who are in this sanatorium and how this experience then affects their lives going forward. I'm really, really unsure about this book. I really loved the characters in it. Um, I thought they were really interesting and I liked learning about all the different people that were in the sanatorium. For example, someone who had survived the Holocaust. But I did just come away from it feeling a bit, so what? I don't really know what the point of this book was, if you can say that any book has a point. Um, I did feel like it was interesting while they were in the sanatorium, but I didn't really feel, I didn't really know what she was trying to say with it. It felt like this would be interesting if it was someone's real life, and it was just, this was a period of my life where I had TB and I went to sanatorium, then I'd be interesting. But as fiction, and as a plot, as a novel, I, I just wasn't sure. I didn't really get why. However, I do think I'm in the minority here with this opinion, because a lot of people I know really, really enjoyed this book. So I'm gonna find it really interesting to discuss this um, with the other guys once everyone's read everything and to get our opinions because like I say, it, was, it wasn't a bad book. I enjoyed it while I was reading it and I enjoyed the characters, um, but I just felt it didn't move me at the end. I didn't, I didn't put it down thinking, wow, um, that was fantastic. And I'm being especially critical here with all of these books because it's on a shortlist for a literary prize. I'm not just going on, that was an okay book, I enjoyed it. I'm trying to be really, really picky because if you're trying to judge a book, it's not just whether you liked it or not, you're also judging it in comparison with the other books on the shortlist. So bear that in mind that I'm being, I'm being extra um, scrutinable, scrutinizing. <laughs> then the next book that I really enjoyed in the month of May was The Power by Naomi Alderman. This is a dystopian, not too distant future kind of book. Um, Naomi is a mentee of Margaret Atwood and you can really see Atwood's influences in this book. It feels very similar to Oryx and Crake and Year of the Flood, those kind of Mad Adam books because this is multiple perspectives um, and it's just told, it's really imaginative but also you could you could believe that this could happen. The premise of this book is that one day a few young girls realise that they have this electric charge and it is revealed that throughout the generations women have been developing this skein in their skin which allows them to generate electricity um, which then kind of flips the whole social structure on its head because suddenly women are more powerful, stronger in a physical sense than men and this takes a look of what would happen to our social structures and our hierarchies if that were the case. We follow a number of different women, um, mostly from the UK and the US to be fair, but she also does examine what would happen in say Moldova if this were the case. What would happen in Saudi Arabia? How are different um, power structures going to be changed? And not only was it interesting, but it's actually really exhilarating, so readable. I absolutely raced through it and wanted to know what was going to be happening. She's also got that kind of macro view of what's happening in society as well as what's happening to the individual, so I really, really enjoyed it. Being very picky, again, this is structured in the sense that there's uh, there are some letters at the beginning and the end of the book, and there are some pictures of artifacts in the middle of the book, which give the impression that this is a historical novel being written by someone in the distant future and they're looking back on the time when this shift happened and although I really liked that idea I just don't know if this book needed it to be honest and especially the bits of the different archaeological finds in the middle of the story I felt like they detracted from the narrative and it is 
I was quite torn by it actually because I liked I liked the idea. I just don't know if it actually added anything to the work itself. So quite interesting there. Overall, really, really enjoyed it. Definitely be looking to read some more of her other work. Um, and I'd really recommend it, especially for like a holiday read actually. This is something you would absolutely whiz through. And then the last book that I read on the shortlist, um, <laughs> that I read and also exists on the shortlist, is The Sport of Kings by C.E. Morgan. Now this is about racehorsing. It's not just about racehorsing. I, I am so conflicted about this novel. This is the novel that conflicted me absolutely the most on the whole shortlist. So this is about a rich uh, white family in Kentucky. We mostly follow um, the story of Henry, who from his childhood and his relationship with his father, and then his love of racehorses and his obsession, and then his relationship with his own daughter. And then in parallel to this family's kind of the story of their generations, we also have um, the story of some people who were related to this family's former slaves. And I don't, <laughs> Uh, that's a, that's a detail which actually annoyed me slightly because it mentions it on the blurb that it's the white family and then the black family who are the descendants of their slaves but it's done so subtly in the book that I almost don't know if it was necessary but anyway so we also have the life of Ormond who is growing up in Cincinnati I believe and it's his relationship with his mother and father and his grandfather and then it all kind of comes together um, towards the middle when um, he goes and works for that family and helps them with their racehorses. The themes of this book and what she was saying in this book I absolutely loved and thought was so interesting. I particularly liked Allman's story growing up. I really found it interesting, the parallels between uh, Henry's obsession with white supremacy and also breeding racehorses and the idea of breeding something to perfection and what lengths you would go to in terms of obsession. I thought it was wonderful. That was really, really clever and really liked kind of her observations there. I also thought her writing was beautiful. I think parts of it were absolutely gorgeous and I really, really appreciated the craft of this novel and how she put it together. However, it was probably about, in my opinion, maybe two, even 200 pages too long. Um, and there are parts of it which just went on to the point where I just felt like, is there any need? For example, you'd have a sermon by somebody and we'd literally have three or four pages of the sermon. And f for me, as a reader, I'm like, can we get on with the plot, please? So I'd be really interested to hear other people's opinions on this now that I've read everything and we can discuss it. I know that Simon at Savage Reads actually really, really enjoyed this. And I find it really interesting that I can really appreciate and enjoy a novel so much in one sense, but then in the other sense, while I was reading it, I was a bit like, I found it dragging and I found it difficult to want to pick it up. Um, and I found the story very slow. And yet in hindsight, now that I finished it, I kind of really appreciate what it was doing. So it depends what you're reading a book for. It depends what you think literature is. Are we looking at something that's very well crafted, something that has a message, something that's written very beautifully? Um, how much does enjoyment and readability of a novel come into that question? So. I, re I just really don't know. I've really enjoyed reading all of these books on the shortlist actually, because they're all so different from each other and the authors have taken very different approaches to their novels. And that's what I love because reading is so subjective. It's not just about what do you want in a novel. It's also what I'm gonna enjoy and what you're gonna enjoy is gonna be completely different and completely subjective. So I really find it interesting that you've got a shortlist of such different books and one of them's got to win. So I think if I were going on enjoyability and readability alone, my favourite book to read has definitely been Stay With Me. I've, I really enjoyed it. I, for some reason, and I can't put my finger on it, I feel like this really, you can really tell this is a debut, um, and not because it isn't good or it isn't um, very well crafted, but I just feel like, it almost feels like there's more to her and like she can write more and I, and I feel like her next novel is going to be like even better. So really enjoyed that one and also I really enjoyed The Power. However, I have just mentioned there are a couple of things about it which I wasn't sure about. But again, in terms of readability, really love those two. And then if we're going to be talking about the art of a novel or the novel as a craft, I feel like First Love is a really great example of that. It's such a short book. And yet Gwendolyn Riley fits so much into it. Like it's amazing the topic she manages to cover compared to the other end of the spectrum of The Sport of Kings, which is a very, very long book. But again, um, so much is covered and it's so well structured. But my enjoyment wasn't that high for either of these, even though both of them have stayed with me after the fact. I didn't love them while I was reading them. So for me, really, the only book on the shortlist which was both enjoyable and kept me interested the whole way through, and I also really appreciated the writing and the whole structure and the craft of the novel, was Do Not Say We Have Nothing. So perhaps, if it was up to me, 
this one would win. But even that, even saying that just makes me feel, I'm not, I'm just really not sure. I don't envy the judges at all. I'm really looking forward to finding out who the winner is on the 7th of June. I was going to say 8th, that's the day of the election. <laughs> I will be at the event, so make sure you're following me on Instagram and Twitter because I'll probably be tweeting and Instagram storying at the event. I, I say probably, I definitely will be knowing me. And also look out for my discussion with Jen and Jean as well because we're going to be arguing, I'm sure, over who we think should, uh, should win the prize. I would love to hear from all of you, if you've read any of these books, what your opinions are. And I think it'd be great to continue the discussion. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. I really look forward to hearing your thoughts and I will see you next time. Bye!